uh, on this because this was something he's actually begged to have happen uh, in the original trilogy. And I think the idea was, uh, was a lot for, for him to you know, accept, but I was talking about it and uh, I, I said, look, a lot of what the structure of this movie is is very traditional. And we very purposely went backwards and kind of use a certain structure that feels very similar, you know, meeting someone in, in the desert, ending with a trench run. We did this purposely to try and kind of allow for this overlap Venn diagram of, of, of brand new with, with the old. And one of the things that Star Wars has always been is a generational story. And <coughs> we needed to do something that was not easy and, and, and something that wasn't a given and safe. And doing this was a big deal. And a lot of people, you know, deliberated this and we talked about it. But it became clear that if we don't do something that's bold, then ultimately the movie just has no guts to it. There's, there's no stakes to it. Nothing significant will have happened. And this was not just a, the Force Awakening in a hero, it's the Force Awakening in a villain. We, we wanted Kylo Ren to be constructed so that he himself was forming and becoming. And what makes him more horrifically villainous than, than patricide and doing something that is, you know, to a character, the victim being someone that's beloved. And I talked about this with Harrison, and it was like he just said, I get it. And with, with I think with Harrison, he talks about this quite a bit. For him, it, it really is about utility of character. What is the purpose of this? If it's for shock value, it's, it's no good. But if it's about defining something that will go forward, if it's about uh, you know, family, if it's about trying the, the best you can, and in fact, in the movie itself, you know, when you first meet Han Solo, uh, it's it's all fun, and, but then when, when he's when he comes up against those gangs, and the first thing that the guy says to him is Han Solo, you're a dead man, and the other guy says, you know, there's nowhere in the galaxy left for you to, to to hide. The idea is that he's kind of at the end of his rope anyway, and that we meet him in a place where there is nothing else for him to do. He's he is at the edge of the cliff the way Ray is, uh, and and he he goes out doing the most righteous thing he can imagine, and when Leia, and I'll shut up in a second, when Leia says. Uh, there's still light in him, I know it. We know she's right because we've heard Kylo Ren say, I still feel the pull to the light. So it, it's, he's doing this thing that, that even though once they walk out on that, on that bridge, you kind of go, oh, it's over. But, <laughs> uh, but at the same time, I think you, you go, oh, but wait a minute. I know he's being pulled over the light. I know that Snoke is being tough on him. I know that, this, you know, so I, I feel like he, he, Harrison understood how critical it was for the story. And if we didn't do that, it, it wouldn't have been as, as powerful uh, an opportunity for him. And so he was, from that moment on, so completely down with it. And on the day we shot it, uh, he and Adam both, I thought, were, were truly uh, extraordinary. I, what a, a great element uh, to, to Andrew Powell, to see him struggle 